Welcome, welcome, welcome to another funky marketing show. Ivan Dimitrievich, aka Totsi, is with us as well. Hello, people. Hello, people. How are you? The summer is finally coming. Are you ready? Oh, I think it's here. I need, I need uh, something to you know to low to low the temperature down. And I think it's uh, my wife's favorite time of the year when she can sleep with uh, with the air condition on. So I think <laughs> we started that yesterday. So what a time to be alive! What a time to be alive! Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, so uh, for those of you that are here for the first time, this is Funky Marketing Show when Ivan and I are talking, ranting, giving insights, giving, sharing results uh, about all the things related to B2B marketing. And um, practically, we can talk about anything. We don't care if somebody thinks that our opinions are wrong. We like to disagree with people and we like to be open and direct with everything. Sometimes I wear glasses, sometimes I don't. There sometimes, is no yeah, sometimes the cat and the dog are inside the, the video or on the recording. Sometimes they aren't, You'll but that's, that's what makes it interesting. Uh, so. Today, uh, the idea was to do, continue the talk about content strategy, but we came up with something different. We gather people, uh, questions from different people, and today we are going to go drop them uh, on and talk about the questions. We will answer some of them. We will say some of those doesn't make sense, or we will do something differently. So. Who knows? Uh, stay with us. We're going to try to keep it, you know, not that long, but uh, short, simple and super uh, insightful. Something something like that. <laughs> we'll try it. Uh, okay. Since we named all the participants on the video, including cats, dogs and my wife, so <laughs> we can we can go and uh, and start with something that is you know, this is really interesting. And somebody asks, how to establish an agency content strategy when outbound stops working? And I can see tons of things that I can talk uh, related to this one. But first, uh, I like to, you know, to give a counter question and to ask, like, why are you thinking about establishing an agency content strategy only when outbound stops working? <laughs> Why I, you don't have it in the first place? Yeah, I, I don't get it because uh, the way I think about uh, selling agency services is by not selling, by showing what you are doing, but by doing the services that you are selling. That's how I like like to, to look at it. I mean, okay, sometimes you need to sell, sometimes you need to do the outbound, sometimes referral stops working, which is mostly how all the agencies are starting. Not all. Uh, we didn't start like that, but most of them. Uh, so my point of view is you need to start with a content strategy right from the start. It's not something that you do when something else stops. It's something that you build for the long run and it takes time. Because like establishing trust, creating a brand, showing that you know things, uh, proving results, it takes time to, to go through all those phases and to get there and creating content for all phases of the buyer's journey, uh, getting buyers through all those phases, all that takes time and it takes different kind of content and outsourcing is simple, man. You just hire a guy, you give him an email addresses and he starts doing the outbound. And of course it's going to stop at one point. You know, because you are going to them and it's harder to sell that way. You are going to them. I mean, outbound sales work, cold calling still works. There's no doubt about it. Cold email still still works. But, you know, it takes a bigger effort than just creating a content, talking about what you are doing, proving the expertise and waiting for people to come and find you. 
And somehow you are, uh, sooner or later, you will reach some plateau. Uh, you will not will be able to create some new demand to reach uh, to reach to some other groups. Uh, you will not be able to change the industry, people's view. You will not be able to show your strategic narrative where it's actually good for you and somehow people are thinking about changing the strategy or doing the strategy when things are start going bad well don't do that people you these, these activities can do really really well hand in hand so don't separate these two yeah uh, i have no idea why people are doing that because they say okay uh, i have been in those situations for for a long time, working in different agencies. And, you know, usually they say, oh, we have, you know, a couple of clients left, a couple of clients left. We need to we need to create more content and to get into it or start creating the content. And then they do it for a month or two. They get a couple of clients and they didn't stop. Yeah. You know, that's not actually how it works. No, and, and a lot of those... Uh, kind of agencies, you know, still focus on Facebook, still post on Facebook pages, which it doesn't work. Nobody is seeing the content on Facebook pages. And uh, there are all kind of things related to that that we can get into. But I think for now is just to ask the question, why didn't you create the content strategy mm -hmm. before? And yeah, so that is the counter question. Uh, guys, feel free, uh, those of you who are uh, watching and listening to us live, feel free to drop your questions. Uh, we'll be happy to, to answer some of them. Um, the second one, can you successfully sell on a social media platform that you don't like? Don't say this is one for you. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm i pretty sure, yes. For example, uh, to be honest, I'm not a big Facebook fan and... Uh, I'm old and I remember the days when people start migrating from MySpace to Facebook. And to be honest, I really don't like Facebook from the early beginnings. And I'm pretty well equipped to sell on Facebook too. So yes, it's possible because we are all professionals and sometimes we like something more. I love LinkedIn, but I will build my presence pretty successful on Twitter too or on Facebook. So yes, it's it's doable. Yeah, I mean, of course it's doable. Uh, I think the best the best way uh, that you can do it is to to have platform that you love and that your clients or customers are using. That's you know, heavenly solution. But sometimes it's a little bit different. You need to adjust because your customers are using specific platforms because they like the way it's being communicated on those platforms. Okay. And you need to adjust. That's it. So no much I mean, talking. It's pretty much normal for us to diversify the effort. So we cannot just go all in on one preferred social media platform. It's, uh, it's, it's not possible in long term run. Yeah. Mm. The third one for today, creativity is overhyped. It's not as important as some other things. Is it true or is it false? Well, creativity is important, but uh, it's not important that much. Uh, in my opinion, consistency is probably the value I, I will go all, all in because uh, if I'm creative in some points of time and in some campaigns and I don't have consistent effort, I will not uh, bring too much value to my audience. So I will always prefer to be consistent and only after that to go creative in some moments. So for me, consistency is probably the value to go. That's interesting. I don't think uh, those two are, you know, one against each other. Uh, I think consistency is something that's that's important for everybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, creativity is the number one thing for results, for performance, for everything. Creativity is the number one thing. If you are not creative, if you cannot differentiate yourself from the others, you won't do anything. And if you're doing ads, 
creative is still the number one thing when it comes to the visuals and when it comes to the to the copy. So uh, those elements, those creative elements are the ones that makes your content stand out. So uh, that's how I look at it. For me, creativity is, uh, is the number one thing. Uh, and I don't think it's overhyped. Uh, and I don't think it's not as important as some. I think it's the most important thing. So for me, it's, uh, this is false, that creativity is overhyped. I don't know. I, I would always start first with consistent effort to provide, I don't know, unified message for my audience. And after some period of consistent efforts, adding value, building <laughs> trust, I will try to be more creative. And I don't know, from my experience, it's hard to be creative and consistent all the time. Maybe I'm let me let me let, let me get you a little bit back. So did you say that when you start, you are not creative and then you become creative? Uh, I, I'm not focusing on creativity. I'm somehow trying to provide like consistent effort, adding value. I mean, I'm creative, but I'm not chasing creativity for all costs. Or you are not chasing perfection. That those are different. Maybe, things. maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not chasing perfection. Let's agree on that. Because when you start, you need to you need to be creative. You need to have different creatives, and this is what makes your brand. You know the colors, the text, the you know the tagline, the message, and everything. And of course, you need to be persistent with that, so people can remember it. I mean, creativity doesn't mean that you change it all the time and maybe i'm creating in own. background doing my consistent work uh because like just being consistent and being there and you know uh not being creative yeah it all depends it, it doesn't mean that you are you know informative or not it doesn't mean that you are educative or not it just means that you are persistent right so, and there are a lot of people who create shitty content and are overly consistent. <laughs> so, <laughs> bad content, they're doing three times per day across the whole, whole social media platform. Yeah, that, that's what I'm telling you. Like, it's, yeah, it's better right. to have one, one post that will nice tell point. something, nice you point. know. I mean, I can name, now I, I, I can name few, but. <laughs> uh, number four, focusing on one platform or diversifying. Yeah, we touched uh, uh, this uh, this problem early on. So uh, I'm I'm for diversifying the effort. So for example, uh, I mean you're all in on LinkedIn. Yes, that's great. But somehow you will end up with sending too too many messages, and you will end up out of your only and preferred platform, and you're out of the business. Don't do that, people. So diversify the efforts all the time. Diversify the efforts, or try to uh, actually own the channels. Build, build your own community. Try to try to diversify. It, it's better for business. It's better for you in any case scenario. Yeah, um, I, I agree on that. Try to diversify wherever is possible. Uh, and you know, like, let me give you a. a I don't know if it's a story of, or whatever it is, but, you know, I've been talking with people uh, about, you know, about diversifying efforts, diversifying uh, clients, the way, you know, clients that pay different, different amounts or, you know, those kind of things, income streams. Uh, but, um, you know, and I told them, okay, we, I don't know, I'm focusing on LinkedIn at that time. Uh, but they told me, no, 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 you are not focused on LinkedIn. When you are publishing your content, you are distributing in all the way. You are creating pod audio podcast. You are creating video podcast. You are active on Twitter, no matter if I'm writing more about basketball. You know, you are active on Facebook. And I didn't see it like that. My focus on business is on LinkedIn. But I'm still distributing the content all around the place and growing other accounts. So, uh, you know, it's important to be present over there. You need, you don't need to focus on each channel, 
uh, all the times, but be be present on each place where your customers are. At least be present and follow what's going on over there. I can, I can tell you that. Because, uh, you know, there was back in when it was like 2017 when Facebook uh, changed the news feed and basically removed the reach from the pages and marketers were in panic. Like, how it can we drama. do things? What we're going to do? You know, and, you know, you can you could easily see that things uh, are going to go in developing personal brands and employees of the company being the ones who will have a voice and who will actually be the biggest influencers of that company in the future. And, yeah, my, basically for the start, I created a checklist for my team to, you know, uh, what to do on LinkedIn and how to distribute the content. Uh, and it was back in 2017. Up until then, people, more and more people realize, you know, um, they change their mar- mindset on their own without their boss telling them what to do and why it's important. That doesn't work, actually. Uh, so, yeah, try to try to see things from dip- different perspectives and try to always look at the big picture. You know, don't put your eggs in one in one basket all the time, uh, but try to do some things differently. Uh, if you are focusing on B2B today, like LinkedIn and Twitter can work one with each other. And a lot of people who are active on LinkedIn are now active on Twitter or vice versa. But, uh, you know, there are some that aren't, but are not important for, for this. I think they just didn't uh, use the platforms as much Facebook or Twitter, so they can see the advantage of combining the two. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we had a situation when uh, I was connecting with people on Twitter and I didn't even know who they are. And uh, sending them uh, welcome messages, just saying hi. They told me that, you know, they're following my content, they're following what we as Funky Marketing, as a team are doing uh, and, you know, giving us respects for that. Uh, and I didn't even know who those people are, to be honest. So it means that you have multiple eyes on your content and everything that you are doing. You just need to, you know, keep pushing and keep doing uh, doing the things. And usually these are uh, people uh, uh, who are not engaging already with our content. Just random people who are uh, well aware of what we are doing. And that's the reality. LinkedIn and Twitter work like very very well for b2b yeah and here comes the question that uh, our friend yag asked me recently on his podcast um waiting for that episode to drop out uh what type of content is the content that you prefer so that's that's an interesting one totsi what's your preferred type of content I prefer like long form, long form social media posts. But to be honest, uh, I have uh, big plans for video production in in this year, this summer, and I will try to focus more on providing uh, short daily tips under one minute or uh, daily rants about different business or life related topics. So for for this point, I will go with long long form posts, but short video is the future in my opinion rent is what we do rent is what we love rent is what we live off <laughs> uh, for me it it was always text post uh, i was even like when i was in primary school and in high school i was writing hip-hop songs even um it's interesting, like it's funny when I look back at those times, but but yeah, uh, I like to write and I like to express myself through writing. Uh, but since I was a kid, like my father was a, was a coach, basketball coach uh, of the team, I was the captain and I didn't have excuse not to talk with the media from my seven years, seven years of age. Yeah. And uh, basically I got used to uh, talking with media, creating videos, 
you know, all those kind of things. And uh, so I think I'm, I'm okay with any type of content, uh, but I prefer text. So uh, it's uh, it's not like if I'm going to do video, I'm going to do video. I don't look at it as something hard or something that I just cannot do or something that, you know, I'll stumble upon on an obstacle or something like that. I don't care because when you start doing some things, maybe in from the start, you will be uncomfortable, but then you will get used to that and, uh, you know, and improve. I mean, we, we talked about it. If you go to the Funky Marketing Facebook page and you can see me from 2017 creating videos from my from my apartment because videos uh, started to be big at that time and I don't want it to miss it, but the light in my room was... Uh, was bad. I had a phone, which for me was okay, but obviously the camera wasn't that good. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of kilos more, so it was all interesting. But you know, I received the comments like, "Man, it's a good content, but you are in the dark." <laughs> like, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, it's just up to you. Start with something that is comfortable to you and then see if you can more move and, as we are already talked about, diversify in other directions. I think podcasts are really good as well, like especially when you just do the audio. I mean, I don't love my voice that much, but I like when I hear it through the microphone <laughs> for some reason. I prefer video. I love to do things. <laughs> um, how do you consistently put out so much content? I think this is the question for, for both of us. Content, content, content. Uh, as you said in as a response on uh, previous questions, somehow uh, we are doing all we are doing all different type of content all the time so for us at this point is actually easy if i need to write the post i will actually not even think i will just sit and write the post if i need to shoot the video i will just shoot the video i don't need additional preparation additional overthinking i don't have like any concerns i don't i don't feel fear about uh, uh, my task so i will just uh, sit and do it that's it so probably the basic tip uh, is people try to not overthink it. So start doing this and be consistent and try to do like these simple improvements. Try to analyze, uh, watch your own video after that, read your own posts and try to find spots where you can actually improve a little bit. Or, I don't know, talk with a, your friend or colleagues who will give you like honest feedback where is uh, the room for the improvement implement and execute that's it i have a different answer which is good uh and i have two answers first one is i create a lot of my content uh in batches so ahead of time i create a, a lot of posts then i just schedule them um and the other thing is I consistently create content and then I repurpose each, each piece of content many times in a different way. So articles, you can come up with so many things out of one article. Podcast as well. Like we are, we are into this call for 25 minutes and we already talk about five different topics. So uh, just an example you can do the transcription of a video and create text post out of it you can come up with the with the parts that stand out create visuals out of it so uh try just to be to be creative and create content that you can distribute that's it you know don't create the content that you can use just just one time there's no uh you know i come from uh from from a town where people are known to be very cheap and so we we don't do things that we cannot reuse or we don't pay 
more money if we don't have to. So uh, think of your content uh, in that way. I think that can be the solution. <laughs> Great tip, man. Great tip. So, um, okay, here comes something uh, that you will like, um, mm-hmm. and it says LinkedIn increase their cha- their characters count limit on posts a lot, and what was 1,300 characters is now looking like 3,000 characters. What are your thoughts? Uh, at the starting point, I was a little bit puzzled how uh, how things will going through all the platform, and now I'm like pretty much comfortable with new format after only two days. But I think my approach it will be different because I'm pretty much sure people will use uh, uh, higher character limits to put uh, like more text to industry related posts. I will try to use it like completely, completely different. Maybe uh, I will try to use longer format posts, 3K long posts for personal stories to go deeper in my emotion, feelings, fears, concerns, stuff like that. And I will try to use my business post uh, like in old format, even shorter, because uh, as we said, we are using Twitter more and more uh, in combination with LinkedIn. So I will try to uh, be short and precise with business related posts and go with some personal storytelling in longer form. And I'm pretty sure people will uh, use the platform a little bit differently. So additional question to that. Will you change the way that you uh, that you shape the post, the way you write for the personal stories? Will you will you change the way you format the post, or or it will be the same format? Just asking because of the length of the of the, the post now. Uh, excellent question. Because today I published like personal story around three k. Uh, around 3k characters and I still using the same format but uh, after a few iterations I will test and to see if there is a place to format post different differently but as I said I first need to test things and to see what others are doing so we will see and uh, in my in my opinion uh, LinkedIn uh, should react accordingly with some text editor because for this format of post I would love to see some bold characters italic characters stuff like that so I need some formatic tools to actually craft a visually better post yeah I think it won't happen LinkedIn is is moving <laughs> is moving slowly and it's moving somehow in a wrong direction I don't know it always gives the solution to something that we don't need yeah uh, um, I don't know. That's that's actually how I see it. My answer to that is, okay, sometimes I may write the longer format, the longer posts, uh, just because, you know, I don't, I don't have to write something in the comments if I have the, the longer, the longer post. But anyway, I think uh, that, um, you know, people will stay in a shorter format. And we are seeing that change. LinkedIn content is moving towards low, lower and lower number of, uh, of words, of characters. Uh, I think that's why I think the connection with Twitter is big. Uh, because of that, a lot of people are, you know, screenshotting their tweets, uh, re-uploading them on LinkedIn. And even before, like, uh, we were all, <laughs> we were all, a couple of us, I don't know if there are more people like that. One example that I can use is Dave Gerhard, DG. He was testing things out on Twitter, and if something's good, he will he would post it on on LinkedIn. I was doing that as well, um, mostly focusing on different channels. I was focusing on on Facebook and uh, testing things out, and then moving it to the to the LinkedIn. So. Um, We'll see, we'll see, but uh, it's definitely interesting and some new things LinkedIn is adding, uh, I think they are not very, very well uh, done. Like uh, we got some question, let me find it. Is Rich being impacted by creators mode? So just to continue, when we are already talking about LinkedIn, my opinion is that it isn't. There are no any relations to that. 
that upgrade upgrade or the feature of LinkedIn think it's bullshit because okay it puts your number of followers up in on your profile okay that's just you know something that doesn't mean anything okay somebody will see I have more followers and what then um, the other thing is uh, they are putting up your let's say preferred topics uh, above it but uh, they are showing them like hashtags not clickable hashtags so it makes no it makes no sense okay you have now the third option is you have the uh, the option to add like a, like a story on your profile i don't see the point of that for linkedin and, and I don't see any. Your primary CTA is now follow. Okay, I done that. Yeah, we had that option a long ago. So. so I mean, hey, LinkedIn, really, really thank you for these magnificent options. We are now full in creator mode, and we can create our content all the time. Thank you. Yeah, and there was a there was a question around the internet. I don't know where I, I saw it. I think on MJ Peters profile in her post um you know is after the creator mode are we getting more second connections to react to our posts uh i didn't activate my creator mode at the time and i had more uh second and third part connections uh, reacting to my post so it's definitely not related to the to the creators mode it's something else because it's obvious that algorithm is changing but i think nobody knows yet in which direction is going and what is happening there are too much um you know different things going on that you can just conclude something so wherever uh i see that somebody talking about they know what's going on I say it's a bullshit because they cannot know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, all trying to uh, reverse engineering LinkedIn algorithm are more or less funny. People, correlation is not causation. Uh, uh, everyone who is in SEO industry, I don't know, five, ten years knows how things are actually <laughs> working and it's almost impossible to do like predictions like that. Uh, analyzing only few factors <laughs> algorithm is tweaking like all the time so just don't go out with some bold prediction because things are simply don't working that way you will be funny in front uh, any serious audience because uh, for serious analysis you need uh, you need more data and you don't have it simply analyzing i don't know 10 uh, 50 1000 profiles will will not give you like any any good valid uh point to prove it. yeah uh so when it comes to the content going specific or going broad i think that's the question as the 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 first one that we get you know how to start the the content strategy when outbound stops working i think it's the same type of content it means why to limit yourself to one or the other you know, I think you need to first go with specific things. You need to narrow that down to, you know, to hammer over the pain points and to know actually what the pain points are, who are you targeting, and, you know, how are you actually helping them solve the problem. Uh, so even more specific, uh, find those in your ICPs that are frustrated. And that, you know, that uh, are burning to find out the solution uh, for their problems. So be specific with them. And then, I mean, you need to go broad and you need to be more general if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to uh, to change perspectives and to change people because you need, you need to go more broad than what is your topic. Um, and... I mean, it in a way like you want to to sell a specific object for your house. Let's say you first need to draw them the picture of the perfect house, and then narrow it down to show them why you need exactly that chair or that table 
or you know that couch, that TV, whatever it is you are selling. It's the same in B2B in tech. You know, you need to show them the bigger picture, like the company getting somewhere, achieving something, and then you go back, do the reverse engineering and see how you can get them over there. I completely agree with this. I don't have to... <laughs> yeah, and also uh, what we are seeing related to the content on LinkedIn, uh, you know, if you're focusing only on specific things related to your industry and just talk about B2B, about marketing, about sales, whatever it is that you are talking about, after a while, you will be boring. And that's just a fact. That just, I mean, okay, you can do it in a creative way. You can try something else, but you, if you don't get out of that topic at least once a month, uh, you will be, people will see all your posts as the same because it's the same topics you're going all the same. Maybe I'm wrong. Like, I think you're not wrong. Chris Walker Walker is doing that and he's doing that good. And I admire, I admire him for that. You know, to be honest, he's talking about specific things, just going hammering over things, not getting out of that zone, and he's managing to do it. So it's possible, but I think it's not possible for the majority of people. And, you know, I'm looking at myself. I'm somebody who has, you know, uh, a large specter of interest, and I want to talk about different things. So, you know, and very whenever I post something that is, you know, related to uh, to both my personal life or use my personal life to, you know, to show some examples for the business, or I post something like a couple of days ago uh, about Jokic or yesterday, uh, you know, the whole ex-Yugoslavia saw the post and liked it. Um, and I didn't post it because, you know, I wanted the attention. I posted it at... 4 a.m. in the morning while I was watching another basketball player from Serbia doing it. And exactly at the moment when I saw that Jokic got the award. So um, I think those kind of things get a lot of attention. You had the post talking about, about you know, uh, about ex-Yugoslavia, about your growing up uh, with, with the wars, civil war that was going on and all those different things, bombing of Serbia. Uh, you know, those things uh, got a lot of people related to the content. And that's why I think that's how you can go out of your, you know, little circle, little bubble and get other people involved. Because, you know, if you get them involved on a general topic and you are, you know what you are doing related to the, you know, to the way you're talking about things that you are actually selling, they or things that you are actually teaching, they will stick over there and keep following you because you are providing a value, insightful information, education, you know, those kind of things. Mm, that's that's true. I, I, I love to mix approach because I have like many different interests. I would love to share personal stories. I would love to talk about content, uh, modern demand gen, uh, revenue marketing, but I love to talk about sales, deep tech, uh, board games, video games, many, many different aspects. And all these stories are somehow are pieces of puzzle of my social media presence and I would love to share like everything with my audience and I would try to add some value in each of these posts and I mean that's the right way to go definitely I mean you know like so many things are changing daily and I don't know how we cannot not talk about about all those things so I simply uh, to. yeah yeah i don't know i mean i'm acting as myself online and offline so that's it maybe people are different so who knows but number number 10 for today is um want to make content your customers actually consume get ready to work if you want to stand out in a saturated feed you need to use formats that nobody else does I think I saw that on MJ's, again, profile. MJ, thank you for providing 
uh, useful information and something that we can start uh, talking about. So, Totsi, what do you think? What do you think about uh, about this? Do we uh, need to use format that nobody else does if we want to stand out in the feed? Uh, maybe we can use like existing format, but give a uh, interesting, interesting twist. Uh, it's hard to go with something like completely new with the new format of story or post or new type of content or completely new type of uh, video content. But hey, let's find something interesting, but uh, give it with some interesting twist, with some personal touch, with some unique creative feature, with the unique angle of story, with the unique personal storytelling, because uh, we're seeing uh, more or less similar stories uh, done in similar manner. So uh, if you are unique, if you are honest, I'm pretty sure your piece of content will stand out. People will recognize uh, the effort. People will recognize added value. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. We don't need to come up with a new type of content, but we can go and modify and use our approach to the existing content. I mean, with Funky Marketing, this is what we are actually doing. So trying to do something, you know, to come up with our own approach, uh, we can... You know, not every company can or shouldn't, uh, you know, create something new out of the sun. But giving, uh, personalizing things and giving them their own approach, that's something else. That's why, you know, uh, we are having this this podcast distributed as we are in the television. Uh, in the For old example. television. That's why, you know, we have visuals from 50s and 60s for our post, you know, so... Those kind of things, I think it's important to stand out, especially, you know, when you see that everybody are doing the same things, it's important to stand out. And I think it goes, okay, we are now, we are working in the creative industry, but having in mind, uh, you know, looking at uh, MJ's post, she was mentioning a lot of companies that are doing great work inside, you know, the industry, industrial marketing. So it, construction, all those different things like finance, those are the things where you can really stand out if you do something differently. And a lot of companies, you know, have problems with standing out and doing something different, being the first to differentiate. You know, they, it's kind of easier to stand, to stay in the crowd and, and not to, you know, not to go out on your own way because, you know, um, wolves might came, might came, come, you know, and then you are all alone. So what will you do? But on the other way, they might not come. Or for some reason, you know, they might go and, uh, you know, and uh, totally demolish the herd while you are on your own. So those things can happen. Uh so you never know, but choose your own way and choose it wisely. I think in today's world, what makes more sense is to personalize and differentiate, do something on your own, then doing what everybody else are doing. At least that's that's my 50 cent on it. Okay. A couple of more questions. Ah, here's one really specific one. <laughs> Does content marketing work on LinkedIn? It works like a charm, but uh, you need to uh, you need to <laughs> look at the content a little bit different. So uh, don't try to uh, sell it just like that. Try to add value and uh, be persistent, be consistent, uh, show some integrity, build some trust first. Try to actually look at this uh, as building meaningful connections with industry leaders and other people. And uh, when they need your services, believe me, in B2B world, they will come to you. I agree. Um, I mean, definitely content marketing works on LinkedIn. It works on any platform. Yeah. It just, if you, if you know how to do content marketing and how to create content, 
how to distribute it effectively, um, then it works. If you don't know, then it doesn't work. <clears throat> Basically, it's it's like that. If you know the platform and you know how the platform works, if you understand your target customers, then it works. You know, it's all about the customers. So you need to understand what works for them and then create the content. You know, things are simple. We are just complicating. And, I mean, uh, it's not the same. We are not selling, uh, I don't know, some product, uh, $10 product. We are selling like uh, high-end demand generation, revenue marketing programs, uh, ser service uh, based is like uh, it's different service it's different product so uh, more people are uh, included in in this decision uh, your ideal customers need to go through different pieces of content in in their way to decide that they will work with you so it's a process so don't try to uh, look at this and single transaction it's a process so to continue on that process, LinkedIn is uh, evolving, getting to the next level. Are hashtags the thing of a past or they are still relevant? Our opinions about that uh, topic are completely divided and we see uh, like all the time LinkedIn influencers trying to uh, tell us how hashtags are really, really important. And uh, in my opinion, it's total bullshit. We test it. Other people are testing things all the time. And literally, there is no evidence that uh, LinkedIn hashtags are having like any significant impact on reach of your posts. That's like true. You can test it on your own and you will see. Yeah. I mean... My opinion is that I am seeing hashtags early in the morning when, uh, you know, when there aren't many people on the platform and there aren't many people creating content. So this is where I'm seeing the hashtag, but only, only at that time. If you go and, uh, and type, let's say, content strategy with hashtag or without hashtag, you will, you will reach results with both things. So, uh, I don't think it really matters. I stop uh, posting them. Even on Twitter, I, I don't use them that much. Sometimes I, do, I don't think people find my post because of the hashtags, even on Twitter. So um, I think things are changing. And just that thing that, I po that they added hashtags as a topic in the creator mode, I don't know. It's just like they are trying to keep, uh, you know, nice memory of something that once worked. Yeah. They are something. depending their own useless feature. So, yeah, something, something like that. I mean, it's not their useless feature. There are people still adding hashtags on Facebook, especially those that are posting to the, to Facebook over Instagram, just posting on Instagram and, you know, um, setting up things that the post appear on Facebook as well, and it appears then with the hashtags, and you know, what's the point? So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I still see hashtags working on Instagram, to that's be honest. True. That's true. <laughs> but uh, it's working in a way that people are abusing them. So, let's say I'm in Serbia, and there are a couple of cities in Serbia, and um, every, every city has its own hashtag. So I'm following Novi Sad, for example, I'm following Pirot. But I'm seeing, you know, like people selling shoes using hashtags for all the cities above, um, under their photo. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing that in my feed. Uh, or there are some, you know, like ladies, doing this or that and some meaningful message and they did tag all the cities and all the hashtags. And so I'm seeing that in my feed and, you know, I just want to see the city pictures from the city, you know, but how to I, resist. It's so easy to abuse it. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's really easy to abuse it. Yeah, definitely. So who knows? Um, 
what else can we say about the content? Those were all the questions that we that we had. Um, I mean, what I can say is that things are changing very fast and things are evolving and something that works this week might not work the next week. Um, I mean, I remember the times it was in 2019 when I recorded from, um, from April to June, I recorded 60 videos in 60 days. Maybe it was, you know, 70 days, but it was 60 videos. Sometimes uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, but I was seeing how the algorithm is changing, how the views were going up and down, you know, and it's kind of, kind of interesting to see how everything is evolving. If you keep posting every day for two months or three months, you will find out some things that, you know, that a lot of people don't. You will see some things that a lot of people don't see. And uh, I would advise everybody to, you know, whatever your strategy is, keep doing that for at least a month and a half, up to three months, and see how things are changing, if it's working or not, or you will find out why it isn't working. You know, talk to people, see if they can give you the feedback for your content. And, you know, those kind of things. I mean, just who's reacting to your content? Are those the people that you want them to react? And are they reacting the same way, exactly on the way that you want them to react? If not, I mean, what's the purpose of you creating the content? You know, what do you want that content to do? Do you want it to sell? Do you want it to educate? Do you want it to inform? Or do you want it to you know, to uh, entertain. I think that the key is in uh, combining entertainment with education. If you ask me, I think this is where, where the middle is. Winning, winning combination. Yeah. So uh, for the end of this, you know, Totsi and I will just stand up and dance. Uh, I'm just kidding. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, ready. but that's the entertaining you know uh, so try to have those those things inside inside the video so so Totsi what should be the question this week we didn't get any questions uh, related to the things outside of the work so what's one interesting thing that you have done in the last week um, let me see interesting mm -hmm. well i'm i'm not sure i can talk about that live <laughs> <laughs> uh, for for me it was uh i don't know i told my wife i'm a batman pure serious <laughs> <laughs> and, you know because co let, let me draw you the situation because she's going going to bed earlier around around 10 and I'm staying late to work or sometimes I go to play 3x3 at 10 p.m. Uh, or I you know stay to watch NBA so I told her look we need to talk serious <laughs> nice. and there is you know uh, those things that I'm telling you that I'm doing all those three things when you go to sleep it's actually not true so something else is going on. She was like, what? what what's going on? Like, I'm actually Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, need, you, need to, you, you need to have those kind of things, you know, in every relationship to keep it, you know, fresh and interesting and, uh, you know, to nurture all of that. And I think we forget that. Often when we talk with clients, when we talk with people online and everywhere, that's why we, we were saying the differences between being specific and going a little bit general or a little bit more personal or adding entertaining moment. I think those things are extremely important. I agree. I so agree. Uh, in, in the future, for those of you that you, that you are sticking with us still until the end, uh, we'll try to have some interesting one to two minutes videos. It won't be me dancing this time, I promise. 
uh, if you didn't see that, I might repeat it. But, uh, you know, we'll try to come up with different posts and just have a little bit different perspectives. And, you know, I think one thing that was missing in the content that you're creating is the content that when we grab the camera and just do something. Talk Rent or do some something. Topic. Yeah, if I look back and like a year and a half or two ago, I was going to the local market going through the crowd and recording myself creating a video from LinkedIn. When I look at it, I mean, oh my God, but uh, it was something that was really cool. And that's where I started to get the traction on LinkedIn. You know, so those are kind of the interesting things. I was uh, I was waiting for the dog to join us, but it didn't happen this time. She is sleeping, <laughs> she is sleeping and cats are outside, I think. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, okay, guys, you you won't see the dog this time or hear the dog, but uh, Totsi, I will let you give your final thoughts uh, for this episode and finish it. Uh, people, as we said at the beginning, the summer is coming. Go out, take your phone, shoot some cool, interesting video, enjoy the summer. Oh, I like that. In the you know, we can we can see our summer buddies. <laughs> I mean, we, like, we we really need that sunny vibe. It's I mean, guys, you that are watching, not listening, you can see how white are our faces <laughs> because we didn't see the sun that much. But hopefully, that will change soon. Okay. Um, Summer's here and the time is right for racing in the streets, as Bruce Springsteen says. Uh, enough for this episode. I think we talked about so many things. We rented a lot. That was the point, actually. Because this is the show. Mm -hmm.